Safety.tv. Welcome to the Australian Beach Ultimate Championships here on Coolangatta. My name is Oakley Ryan and I am joined by Max Stenstrom. We are bringing to you live streamed a game between uh, a bit of a pickup team from Sydney called Giddy Up and the crew of Brew from Adelaide. <laughs> um, heard some good things about this Giddy Up team thus far. Um, they've taken out a couple of the top seeds, so it lo looks like it's going to be a really interesting game. Yeah, they've taken some big scalps this morning. Uh, on paper, they're a strong team, but you would have thought they would have been underdogs in a couple of them, but so far undefeated. Go, uh, taking the scalp of Turtle Club along the way, who are one of the early early favourites for the tournament. So, <coughs> big things to see from Giddy Up. Caught a few teams on the hop, taking them by surprise, and left them feeling a little giddy. <laughs> Well, well done there, Max. I'll pay that one. Uh, the the crew from uh, the crew from Adelaide, uh, been relatively consistent on the beach ultimate scene. Have played the past couple of years, um, and have generally seeded and plays quite well. So it'll be really um, really good to see how they go out there today. I'm really looking forward to this game. I think it's going to be an amazing matchup. Yeah, this is a a really interesting one uh, in terms of what the two teams bring. Giddy up a bit of a an all-star pickup team. You know, a lot of these players come from all over the place. We've got people from Perth, we've got New Zealanders, a few Sydney people. And down the other end, you've got a solid core. It's a whole team from Adelaide. They know each other. They play together regularly. So it's, it's that question of chemistry or all-star power. And we'll see which one comes out on top in this match. Both teams having uh, people who participated in uh, World Beach uh, in Roy in France last year. So I think I think it's just going to be a great game. We're going to see some big plays, I think, from everyone out there. Crew will be starting on defense. Ronaldo Warren Paul. White with the pull. One of those uh, reef sharks, the Australian men's beach team. With the outside in pull, he lands it in. And it was touched by Alex Shepard and then rolled out the back, so he'll bring oh, it. No, I don't. I think Alex Shepard is denying the touch there. So it's coming at the front of the end zone, Max. <laughs> oh, look, cheating to win, but that's all right. If that's what you have to do, if that's how he wants to play, that's his choice. Immediately has both Dawson and Monty streaming towards the end zone. Dumps it to Thomas. He'll hit Monty back underneath. Monty will go down the line to over the head of Carmen. And Dawson lays out, but can't hold on. She's marked by Louis Batista. Oh, Louisa Batista, apparently. Apologies. Warren White picks up to Schrader. He looks for the big. He puts the big. Oh, and a great defensive great effort by Monty. Couldn't quite close the deal there with Katie Stevens. You see why she's known as one of the, one of the quickest women in Australian Ultimate. The takeoff speed on her as she streams deep there is just ridiculous. And how could you not hit that? Thomas sticks it, but it'll float. Give the defender an opportunity, but it's red well. She'll put it out in front of Carmen, who'll make no mistake. Showing their class. Clinical offense, the speed on Monty there, just as soon as it did turn, she just took off, put the, put, dug the heels in and just went for a bit of a jog. Katie Stevens just couldn't keep up and it paid dividends for them. Expect to see a lot of the heavy lifting downfield done by the core of the women on this giddy up team. Some exceptional cutters in Monty, Dawson and Carmen. All with plenty of green and gold experience. Played on a number of different international teams. Dawson most recently with the Blue Bottles. Monty of course a fire tail and Carmen having done it all including being a croc back in 2013. So no shortage of experience that they're bringing to the beach today. And it now looks like we've got Fernando set to pull. The New Zealand ring in, hailing from Christchurch. Shout out to Christchurch Ultimate. If you are joining us on the stream from Christchurch, thanks for being here. We always appreciate support from across the Dutch. Disfielded there by Foley. Back in the centre with Foley. Tonkin's going deep. But it looks like 
the throw meant to come out inside out and just didn't quite execute it correctly. Didn't have the juice. And now Sutton will bring the disc back in. Most well known in his recent years, coaching the GWS Blaze team as he reaches deep for Nat Fernando. Lovely athletic play. Connecting beautifully between those two. The lefty backhand around. Finds a streaking Fernando. Who does a force to lay out, but makes it look easy. They're just fast, quick points there uh, occurring right now from Giddy Up. They're making their offense uh, clinical and easy. Really, really punishing Brew for all the turnovers, for the little mistakes that they're giving them. You can see why they're looking like a real force that'll be around at the pointy end of this tournament. Now, as I was saying, they do have Mitch Sutton on the team who just threw that goal. He's recently been known for coaching GWS Blaze to uh, a bronze medal this year at Nationals and last year a fourth place in their first year. So a top-level coach as well, and I'm sure they'll be taking advantage of his tactical nous as well as his lovely outside-in backhands. And now Shepard with the pull. Big bladey pull rolls out the back of the end zone. Fielded by Warren White. It's going to be brought up. Warren Wright being marked by the big man, Alex Pentney Brand, Alex PV. That'll be a great matchup, so watch out for it. Tis now is Foley. He puts it up, tries to find straight up. Bit big of a contact, knock. but Shepard shrugs it off. And looks to move it quickly. Trony Van goes back to Shepard. Breaks the mark with a nice backhand to Carmen. As they work it down that far sideline. They have Kelly, but they'll go back to Shepard instead. Shepard recently having the honour of being the number one draft pick in the Australian Ultimate League. Clearly a well-respected player with huge amounts of talent. Disc was just overthrown from the receiver there on Giddy Up. Gives Brew another chance to attack this offense. Being picked up by Warren White. Victory as his dump. Sees Foley through the center of the field. To Schrader. Schrader being marked there by Shepard. Finds Warren White, but he fumbles it straight out of his hands. Giddy up. We'll move it quickly back into the center. As they find Kelly. Dish to Shepard. He goes back to Kelly. But they weren't quite on the same page. I don't think Kelly was expecting the give-and-go action from Shepard. Seems to be a few fumbles and mistakes happening from both teams here. I think everyone just needs to take a bit of a deep breath and reset themselves. Emma Victory picking it up. Finds Foley. Overthrows Victory, though, and it gets deed by Carmen. Yeah, that turnover between Shepard and Kelly, I think, is a prime example of the challenges that can face a team, an all-star team like this, where they're not used to playing together. They just weren't quite on the same page as what the next look would be. Oh, Greg Schrader pops the hand out and just, just takes it, but seemed as if there was a call. Uncontested foul, so just goes back. Shepard. Sees Kelly going deep, trusts his pace. Kelly, the, the Perth import for this team, plays most of his ultimate for Sublime, uh, the Perth men's club. Makes, makes running on sand look easy, Max. Yeah, he's a devastating cutter on grass, and he's able to transfer that ability directly onto the beach. Equally devastating, equally difficult to guard. Brew wanting to get on the board now. They're down 3-0. Wanting to try and uh, draw some blood now. Look, looking to play clinical offense. Probably sharpen up those little mistakes that they've made thus far. We've got Michael Thomas set to pull. He's coming back from a, an injury. He had a broken hand in the, earlier in the season. And this is his first tournament back. And... As a result of that injury, he's not quite in the shape that he'd like to be, apparently. And 
despite that, he's still got a phenomenal work rate to the point that he was on the sideline a little earlier having a spew. But now Dawson with the disc. He goes back to Thomas. To the silver. Surveys the options. Goes over the top to Thomas. And that's a goal. Rory got really punished there. They uh, got one of the discs with uh, one of their one of their shorter shorter members of their team. Um, she was running out of options. Tried to put the hammer up over some over some bigger boys and just couldn't quite execute it correctly. And it just got just got brought down by Giddy up. So the real thing I want to get your opinion on Oakley is. Yeah. Uh, Mikael de Silva's moustache. It is luscious. So my opinion, moustaches suit that boy. He pulls it off. He makes a moustache look good. Not everyone can, but he does it with a certain, certain panache. Certain prowess on him. He pulls it off. He makes it look classy. Have a, have a look at it on the stream if you get the chance. Fernando from Wheel Windy Christchurch, not troubled by this breeze, with a lovely pull. And Giddy up in a zone now. And why not? If you're Giddy up, you, you, know, you know that man defense is working. Why not try and change it up? Try your other options out. See what else you can do. Schrader then just, oh, tips it, but it gets caught through the center of the field. Schrader with the disc again. Finds Warren White on the far sideline. Taryn Ryan in the middle of the field there really needs to get more involved. She's got it right in the end zone line. Finds Warren White again. He's looking for options. He's looking for options. He's got Schrader as a dump if he needs it. There we go. Finds Schrader again. To, back to Warren White. That's a goal. Brewer on the board. They break the drought. They notch one up. Johnny Warren White stepping up from that point almost every second pass, most of the way up the field. He's he one of the leaders on this team, and he'll have to continue to play like that. He worked really hard through that offense there, as you said, getting every second disc. I mean, if the, if the option's there, why not take it? Uh, we're obviously enjoying the fact that maybe there was a little bit more space to that zone. They found it a little bit easier to, um, to stretch the space and get it to their receivers. Um, Giddy Up might be wanting to practice that one a bit more, and try and refine that maybe for later on in the tournament when they're playing some more experienced teams and I uh, want to pull that zone out again. One of the difficulties as crew, uh, sorry, brew, when you're lining up against this giddy up team is knowing who's going to do what on any given line. The talent on this giddy-up team is such that any one of those players could be handling this point and any one of them could be cutting deep. So calling a defense could be very challenging. They're I'd have to agree there, Max. Everyone's a threat on that on the giddy-up team and you, you can't quite guess if they're going to be playing upfield or downfield at any given moment. I mean, here's a prime example. Alex Shepard just received that pull and he's well known as... You know, the Australian Dingoes, the Australian men's team is one of their number one cutters and he's playing as a handler here. So, of course, a two-way threat. Brew got the turnover that they needed. Disc is with Tran now. He looks off Foley. Finds Katie Stevens. Disc is, seems to be fumbled and caught by Foley in the end zone, but Brew will take it. That's another notch on the board for them. That's two in a row. Comeback. All aboard the comeback train. Starting it early. Brew saying, we know you jumped out to a four-point lead. We know we aren't playing great, but that's not representative of our true quality. They gave up a few easy turns early, a couple of simple drops, and they've ironed them out of their game, and look at them now. be interesting to see what what Brew do here now for their defense. They'll be obviously wanting to try and get another D uh, to keep to keep on this comeback train, as you said before. 
Are they going to stick with man? Will they pull out a zone? Giddy up, I'm sure, are wanting to try and extend their lead probably a bit further as well. So let's see what tricks they can pull out of the bag to try and try and extend this lead further. Warren White with the pull. Big pull there. Fielded by Montes, centering to Sutton. They isolate Carmen down this side of the field with a side stack. De Silva goes under and Kelly goes deep. Now Monty going deep. And De Silva will take that option. Why wouldn't you? Just a touch over her head. That was a great option. Great cut from Monty though. She really had the whole end zone and the whole field ahead of her for De Silva to, to throw into. Tonkin's going to pick up the disc for Brew. Disc is in, but no movement options yet. Finds Warren White. Contention on whether the disc was up or down. Disc is up. Play continues. Disc is with Katie Stevens there. She's looking for the dump. Warren White gets free. Finds Tonkin, but just overthrows Ryan there. Oh, Beck Harmon. Too easy. Sutton sees her going deep. And hits her with a beautiful backhand. That lefty backhand of his... Proved valuable for this team so far. That's assist number two. He's been lighting up the stat sheet from what I hear this morning, catching a bunch of goals and now showing his ability to throw them as well. Tonkin anticipated that throw really well. I don't know if you saw on this close sideline here, Max, that uh, as the throw went up, he had a bit out on that and was only within a hand's reach away um, from actually getting the D. So props to him for seeing that. And, you know, it seems as if Brewer maybe trying to finding their groove a bit now and uh, feeling a bit more comfortable out there on the field. They certainly are putting plenty of pressure on this giddy up team. And we've seen that they can be successful and it's both teams applying a lot of pressure and more often than not it's been Brew that's made the simple error under that pressure. If they can take that out of their game, remove those simple errors, they're playing great defense and they will be rewarded if they can build that pressure over time without giving up cheap breaks in the meantime. This is with Foley on the far sideline. He doesn't really have any options, so he punts it deep, trying to get to Tran, but looks as if Fernando gets there first. Gets off his feet again. Then use the Kiwi import. Showing his athleticism. And Petroni Vran will go pick up the disc for Giddy Up. They'll set up a vertical stack with Fernando out in the lane by the look of it. And Dawson in the dump space. Dawson immediately cuts deep. Struggling to generate as Dawson provides the under but drops it as she's forced to lay out. That's the type of pressure that Brewer looking to play on defense and trying to put on Giddy Up, force those uh, those throws and those errors so then they can get the disc nice and close to their sideline. Picked up by Foley to Foley. Back to Foley to Foley again and scores with Tran. I did very well working that through each other there. Foley to Foley to Foley. To yep. That's exactly how it went down. No shortage of chemistry between those two, obviously. Pays off. A lively bit of handler movement that set up that goal. Brew, bring it back to within two again. They're still definitely within this game and bringing it to Giddy Up. Giddy Up uh, have probably made a few um, a few errors that you generally wouldn't expect to see from uh, from that team and with players of their experience. So they'll probably definitely be wanting to clean that up. Uh, to extend that lead out further. Does feel, however, that 
giddy up are kind of in, in third gear. They do have another one if they need it, it feels. They're, they're kind of cruising along, and Brew, Brewer obviously hot in their heels. But you feel at any moment, giddy up could find another level. Kelly will field this pull and send it to Thomas with Carmen out in space. He won't waste any time. He goes deep with the backhand. Lovely touch throw. And Carmen again. On the doorstep now. Cerveza options goes back to Kelly, who will go quickly to Monty. And that's another one. When they move it quickly, they just look so crisp. I think the one of the things that they definitely have over, over Brew is, um, is speed. The way that they run on the sand and they can push themselves through, they just make it look so easy. They definitely open the gap between them and their defender and it gives them lots of time to receive the disc. Brew just don't, just can't keep up and they don't, um, either don't have the legs, the legs to keep up or just don't have the ability to, to be there in the contention. They've been repeatedly going for isolation offences with a side stack and that allows them to take full advantage of those pace mismatch-ups that you're talking about. Um, we saw there Carmen out in the lane, able just to turn on a dime, head deep, and use her pace to her advantage. And when you set up like that, it means that there's no ability to play help defence from the other team, giving Carmen a nice old cut deep, and Thomas was happy to deliver the pass. Clinical offense, it's worked for them. We've seen it multiple times throughout this game. And, uh, you know, if it's, if it's not broke, don't fix it. They can continue probably doing that all game if, uh, if Brew will let them. And I guess that's the question. Can Brew mix it up, force them to change something? Uh, but they first got to play some offense. Disc is being brought in by Batista to Foley. Finds Tonkin. Back to Batista. Back to Foley. Oh, missed throw. Misread by everyone through the center of the field and fet, uh, fetched up by Shepard. Sutton with the disc. That around lefty backhand. He's got De Silva underneath it. Very lovely throw. Onto that fat side into plenty of space. It's beautiful float. Beautiful execution. When that throw is thrown well, it's, it's so difficult as a defender to get involved. That's half time. Opting not to take a break, it appears, and they're just going to play, play straight through. So Giddy Up, who's jumping out to a 7-3 uh, lead quickly here. As Brew, what do you think they need to change? Is there, is there something they can do, or is it simply just a matter of being outclassed right now? I think, I think Brew need to try and uh, take, uh, shut down the, uh, the options of Giddy Up. They seem to be wanting to take that deep shot nearly every single time, and so it might just be something as simple as setting up deep and trying to force everyone under, make them throw more throws. Obviously, more throws are thrown, the, the higher the chance that, that an error is going to be made. Um, bake them through the disc more, make it touch, touch more hands and just hope that you can either get the turnover or the drop's going to be had. On offense, I think uh, Brew just need to, you know, take the options that are given to them. They seem to be looking off some cuts and then in doing so, it means that, you know, they take a less favorable option because the stall count's getting high. So take the options that are given to them and that might, might execute a bit better. Big pull by Shepard will roll out the back. Warren Wright electing not to try and catch it. It was a bit of a bladey pull. I don't blame him. Nothing more embarrassing than dropping a pull on a live stream. True. <laughs> not sure if you ever really recover from those. He goes with a high release backhand to Tonkin. That's nice. Tonkin comfortably gets that one. Centers to, to Ryan. Back to Tonkin. He looks to hit the end zone. And he does. He finds Greg Schrader. With a nice, nice inside flick. I think that's the type of offense that Brew needs to be playing. As you said, just taking the first look when they saw it. Not hesitating, not thinking twice. It was high tempo. It didn't feel rushed. It was just a case of seeing that shot and taking it. And in the end, Tonkin saw a channel that no one else could, was aware of and just shot straight down it into the, 
into the safe hands of his receiver for the goal. Scores only 7-4 uh, to Giddy up. Brew can still definitely be in this. They just need to make a few changes to their defense. If they continue with the offense that they just played, I think that they definitely uh, can definitely take this game out. They just need to click up their defense a notch and um, try and shut down those deep options from Giddy up. The line for Giddy up this point on offense. Monty, Petroni Vran, Mortimer, Fernando, and Petroni Van will pick it up and move it to the center. Opting for a horizontal this point. Mixing it up, keeping the opposition guessing as they move it to the far sideline. That was Longley to Monty. She doesn't like her options, has to go backwards to Petroni Van. Oh, Foley gets a hand on that one. And it was just enough to take off the pace that it turned. Picked up by Foley. He looks to move it quickly. Finds Tran. Back to Foley. Back to Tran. On the far sideline now. He centres it back to Foley. There's a pick call downfield. Foley and Tran playing some nice handler weave offense. We'll see if they can connect with their downfield cutters. Finds Batista on the far side. Foley gets the disc back again. Puts the hammer up. And Bruce score. Katie Stevens there with the goal from the hammer. That was some great offense there um, from Brew. Again, taking the first option. Moving the disc quickly, and it seems to be paying off. They got the turnover that they needed uh, as well from Giddy Up. So if they can continue to play like that, then Giddy Up might be in a bit of trouble. Yeah, that's a break. Uh, it's good to see that Giddy Up do bleed. They're mortal after all. They've seemed so clean on offense most of the time, but over the course of the game, Brew's been putting pressure on. We talked about it earlier. Uh, Warren White coming close to getting a, a block earlier. It's when you're coming within inches repeatedly, it gets in the head of the other team and that pressure builds and eventually you are rewarded with the turns as they were there, Foley, just getting a getting a piece of the, the around throw from Petroni Vran. And despite the athletic play from Fernando, they weren't able to hold on to possession and then beautifully clinical with the disc, patient when they needed to be, aggressive when they needed to be, and they're rewarded with a break. Brings it back to 5-7. Uh, we're in the, we're in the um, tail end of this game now, um, and I'm really excited to see what this back half uh, holds. If Brew can keep up this intensity, um, I think that the end half of this game is definitely going to be a close one. Thomas to Carmen. She's got Dawson. Doesn't want it. Shepard. I think we've got a foul call. He went for the, the low backhand, but straight up. Very quick to not contest. I think there was a bit of an L remark there from Shepard, so it might have been a fair bit of contact on that one. Yeah, neither of those players the kind of guys to shy away from a, a bit of biff. Lovely shake and bake from Shepard. He's looking to get every second now. Dawson with it. She goes back to Thomas. Thomas sizes up the downfield options. The bladey flick over the top to Shepard. That's nice. You felt that after that foul by Schrader, Shepard kind of turned it up a notch and was like, all right, here we go. I'm going to show you what I got. You can't get me. And in the end, gets the goal. That's Giddy Up's first goal after half as well. So uh, Brew, Brew really controlled uh, the tempo of that one immediately after half. Um, and Giddy Up now just getting their first goal after half. So... It wasn't as easy as uh, as it had been earlier in the game. So uh, Brew definitely were doing some doing a really good job there on defense to try and clamp down and uh, control their options. While of course you never want to foul in that situation, that foul by Schrader probably suggests that he was close to getting a D. 
which is part of that uh, continuing pressure that this Brew defense has built over the game. Oh, oh. and that could be costly. That could be costly. That was a, a dropped pull there from Foley. He uh, has had the uh, the shake of the head as it just rolled straight out of his hands, came in on a very, very big angle, and you just couldn't quite wrap the mitts around it to control that one. Yeah, shook his head in disbelief. Couldn't believe it had happened, really. And we spoke earlier about Tonkin not trying to catch on because he didn't want to risk it on stream. Foley maybe should have <laughs> taken a leaf out of his book. <laughs> As Sutton will bring it in. This could be costly now for, uh, for Brew if Giddy Up is able to convert from this. They isolate one player in space, but Tonkin... As Tonkin also trips over the tape at the same time. <laughs> Not a bad effort from him. <laughs> Gets the D while tripping on the, on the field tape. Foley overthrows to Tran and it's back with Giddy Up again. Monty comes underneath. Goes fat side flick to De Silva. Is it too far? Can he keep it in? And that's Manges a goal. Manages to just keep it in. Pinpoint accuracy from Hannah Monty. Costly, uh, costly errors from Brew there. Although they did get the turn back after the uh, the drop pull, that overthrow uh, and give back just uh, just really hurt them a bit. Two cheap errors in one point, drop pull, and then. A pretty simple overthrow and what what would generally be a regulation pass just pops it up a little too high over the head of the receiver. And that's the story of this game, really. Brew have looked in patches absolutely brilliant, absolutely clinical, absolutely crisp. But then they'll make a, a simple, simple error like that one. They lose their focus for a moment. They drop a simple catch. They turf a simple throw. And... Giddy up have been all too willing to pounce and take those opportunities. That's exactly right. Brew had a had a short run there where they were playing some absolutely clinical offense, where they shredded a zone really easily, um, and got a couple of quick points on the board. Had some really good defense to force turns from the Giddy up team, uh, and then just let it go again. So they need to try and find that groove again. Um, hopefully, hopefully in this point, as uh, Jonathan Warren Wright brings the disc in at the brick. Schrader being isolated there in the middle of the field. Back to Warren White. He looked long but didn't have anything. Finds Tonkin. He wants to he wants to put it break. And then the Big put goes up. Oh, great effort by Tonkin to keep that in. There'll be a bit of discussion about whether his toe was on the tape or not. We wait here in anticipation as we get another look at it on the replay. It's hard to tell from this angle, but that's a hell of a play regardless. Very difficult to see from here. And they'll have a chat. They've actually gone to the photographer who might have caught it on his camera. Obviously a very close call there. Looks like the signal is it's out. Perhaps? No. I contested and con it's coming back. Contested. Don't see that call ha occur too often, so it's the best outcome that can occur. Evans to Tonkin. He's looking for someone. Finds Ryan. There is a call, though. Don't quite know what it was. I think it might have been a pick call. Warren White goes in. He goes up and he scores. Brew. Brew with the goal. That's what they needed to try and keep them in this game. 
Brew not rolling over. They're not willing to give up just yet, which is pretty impressive. It'd be easy to imagine a team capitulating when they went down early the way they did uh, with Giddy up racing out to a big lead. But they've showed their veteran status, maybe showed some of that uh, team unity and mental strength to fight back and say, we're going to keep pushing to the end. And continuing to make big plays. I mean, Tonkin's catch there went back, but it's that kind of play that fires your team up to keep pushing on all cylinders and to put your body on the line and go 105% for every disc. And in the end, a nice little high release backhand to Johnny Warren White as he powered up line. Brewer definitely still in this game. If they play the offense and defense that they did um, only a few points ago, then they could certainly bring it back to Giddy up. They made them make some uh, some errors which were costly. So uh, Brew can definitely still be in this. It's just whether or not they can keep that intensity. Giddy up with the two three, Horro. Monty on the far sideline has a couple of players going deep. She'll throw. There's Thomas and Carmen in the vicinity. And Thomas probably steals one from Carmen there. Plucks it from right above her head. By all rights, she, it was her space. She'd cut first. But a goal's a goal, I guess, and Giddy Up will take it. Giddy up currently maintaining this uh, four goal lead that they have. Brew come out on offense and they, you know, want to try and close that and bring it back to three, but, you know, then they'll have to play some really hard defense to bring that back closer. They've got their work cut out for them. Giddy up, uh, their offense just seems to be looking a little bit easier and easier as they go through. So they'll probably want to be powering on through and closing out this game soon. Giddy up just taking a bit of time to talk about their defensive structures, it seems. As Alex Shepard prepares to pull. Lays is a backhand that'll roll out the back. No surprises there. Brew not trying to catch any. He pulls. They've made that mistake once, and it's not the kind of mistake you make more than once. Warren White goes down the line to Foley, finds Ryan. She needs to move that disc quickly, though. And she, oh, just overthrows Foley and outstretched Foley. Alex Shepard picks it up quickly and throws the scoop. To Dawson! Great layout attempt, but can't hold on. Interesting throw choice from Alex Shepard. Interesting throw choice. Looks like Abby Dawson even got a finger on it, so whilst it was an interesting throw choice, it almost came off. Definitely would have found its way onto the highlight reel if it had completed. I agree. Picked up by Foley. She, find, he, she finds Schrader, dishes it to Warren White. Finds Schrader again. He puts it up. He has Evans underneath it. Just a bit of a misread. And Mortimer, looking to move it quickly, finds Shepard underneath. He has Kelly and Lamb, but doesn't take either. Instead goes to Dawson. Dawson's not afraid to shoot them when she wants, but instead goes back to Shepard. Shepard, backhand to Dawson. Trying to repay for his sins, but instead another... <laughs> Uh, throw just a touch out in front of Dawson that she can't get to. Looks like Dawson almost expected it on the flick side. Picked up by Foley. Not really much movement happening downfield for Brew. Oh, Warren White just manages to keep that one in to Evans. Just Schrader in the centre of the field. Warren White's got a bit of space to go for a trot. Schrader's free. He has a point, points out to Evans. 
And the hammer bounces off her fingertips. And that's one of those execution errors that we've been talking about from Brew. They look so good all the way up the field, stringing together a number of really nice looking passes with great movement and then can't finish the job. As Dawson comes underneath, dishes back to Shepard. Has Kelly going deep? He'll shoot it. Warren White in hot pursuit, but Kelly too fast. The throw too good. And Giddy up, get another to take it to 11-6. It was a well-weighted throw there from Shepard. He, he put enough on it, put it out in far enough, enough float that uh, that Warren White uh, just wasn't going to get there. Even even if he had a bit more speed on him, I don't think he would have got there in the end. That was unfortunate there from Brew. They were very very close to sealing that deal a few times, and it just uh, just didn't quite happen for them. Only a few minutes left in this game. Uh, Brew are going to have a, a lot of work cut out for them um, at time cap if they want to try and win this game out. Giddy up are probably looking to power on through, try and close it out. As Fernando pulls. Nice floaty pull. Foley leaves this one. Doesn't want to risk dropping another pull. Finds Tonkin to Stevens. Back to Tonkin. Giddy up playing a zone defense now. To Foley. Batista on this close sideline. Back to Foley in the center of the field. To Tonkin on the far sideline. To Foley. Brew moving nicely. Not wanting to stay stagnant. To Foley, to Tonkin, really anchoring this offense. He puts it up. Stevens just doesn't quite bring it down over Fernando. Fernando, a bit of an unknown, unknown quantity, a bit of an X factor for this giddy up team. I mean, most of the other players in their team will be well known in the Australian scene, but obviously as a as a Kiwi import. Fernando is a dark horse. No one knows what to expect. But we're quickly learning the answer is to expect athletic plays and great defense. As Sutton shoots deep for Carmen, but too far. That's been one of his favorite throws, that outside in backhand across the width of the field. But Lightning doesn't strike three times, apparently. It's come off twice, but not there. And it looks like Giddy Up will reset there zone defense and Brew will have to work it up the full length Foley uh, will set up in the center with the disc Batista on the near sideline probably almost a bit of a strategic option there from Giddy Up uh, making Brew have to bring it down the full length of the field again which um, they, they did relatively easily but they seem to still be cramming it down that far sideline and going through the same couple of players Tonkin with the disc currently can't, doesn't have an option. Finds Tran to Foley. Foley's looking. Who He finds Tonkin on the far sideline. Back to Foley. Oh, layout attempt finds from Sutton. Finds Stevens. Oh, and Tonkin fumbles the dump. De Silva has Fernando going long, Tran in pursuit, but the throw is too good and hits his player on the chest. Giddy up. Just showing their class. Their talent from the top to the bottom of their roster is exemplary. They can all make the throws, they can all make the defensive plays. As we saw Sutton go sideways that point, fully horizontal. Not able to get it in the end, but. They're just constantly putting the pressure on, making the bids, making the other team think twice. And they're eventually being rewarded. Just heard the who to go. Means uh, 
this game is uh, finished. It's in its last point now. It's going to be a game to 13. So Giddy up needing... Oh, well, game to 13. So this could be the last point. Giddy up needing to get the D to close it all out. Uh, Brew definitely have their work cut out for them if they're going to take the W on this one. Uh, as the Hooter just went just then, I feel... I think the actual game will be to... 14 if Giddy Up score this, or 13 if Bruce score this. Is that right? Uh, score cap's 13. So, game to 13. Apologies, of course it is. Schrader in the middle of the field from Foley. He finds Ryan on the far sideline. Back to Foley. He pops it up. He's got Schrader underneath it. Who misreads it and it sails over his head. Could this be what Giddy Up need to close out this game? Petroni Vran. Thomas underneath. Having to work hard to get open. Eventually he does. He'll shoot deep. He has Monty. It's going to sit up. That's Pi. Can she get up? She does. She does. She has Kelly and Akers. And she'll hit him. Giddy Up. Giddy Up. Giddy Up, get up. In the end. That was a huge grab from Monty. She was out positioned. She got boxed out and she still managed to get up and pull that one down. She's a dual international representing Australia in both Ultimate Frisbee and in Quidditch. And you can see why with raw athleticism like that, making the play and in the end, sealing the game for the Giddy Up team. They take that one 13-6 as they continue their undefeated streak. We've got more Ultimate coming to you live from the Australian Beach Ultimate Championships here at the Gold Coast. So do stick around, share the stream, tell your friends about it. I've been Max Denstrom. I've been joined in the booth by Oakley Ryan. Uh, don't go anywhere. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, guys. Alti.tv.